Hey everyone, Dusty from NVIDIA here. Today we're going to code real-time object detection in Python from a live camera stream running on Jetson Nano, NVIDIA's $99 AI computer for deep learning inference and computer vision. Jetson Nano is NVIDIA's smallest and lowest power embedded system and has an integrated GPU on board with 128 CUDA cores and half a teraflop for performance in 5 to 10 watts of power it's easy to use and runs lots of different neural networks from popular machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and CAFE, and a full Linux desktop with graphics acceleration. The Nano is a complete computer with a quad-core ARM CPU, 4GB of RAM, the CUDA GPU, dedicated 4K video encoder and decoder, and lots of I.O., including hardware offloaded camera capture, 4 USB 3 ports, PCI Express M.2, Gigabit Ethernet, a micro SD card slot, and the typical low level interfaces like I Swear C, SPY, UART, and GPIO. Now, before we dive into the code, if you haven't already, let's get your Nano set up by following the Getting Started URL shown here. Or you can skip ahead a minute or two in the video if you already have it up and running. Out of the box, the dev kit includes a pre assembled Nano Compute module, heatsink, and carrier board ready to be plugged into your typical connections like HDMI or DisplayPort, USB devices, and a 5 volt power supply. For the power supply, you can use a 2.5 amp micro USB charger or a 5 volt 4 amp DC barrel jack adapter. Listed on the page are some recommended power supplies that work well. Next, you'll flash your micro SD card with NVIDIA's Jetpack image, which contains the Ubuntu OS along with the Linux for Tegra kernel and NVIDIA's tools like the CUDA toolkit and deep learning libraries like QDNN and TensorRT. You can flash the Jetpack image to your SD card from a Windows, Mac, or Linux PC with the Etro tool or similar, which are covered in the instructions here. Then, after plugging in an HDMI or DisplayPort monitor and USB keyboard or mouse, you can take the SD card and plug it into the SD card slot on your Nano. Plug in your power adapter and the Nano will boot up automatically. The first boot, you'll need to do some initial configuration steps for Linux to create a new user and set up your networking connection. So now onto the tutorial part of the video. Uh, we're going to be using a GitHub called Hello AI World, which the URL will be shown here and also in the description below. And this GitHub includes a number of different deep learning components for inferencing, which is the runtime component of deep learning after the network's trained including image recognition, object detection, and semantic segmentation. The Hello AI world includes a runtime library in addition to a number of examples both in C++ and Python uh, that you can use to deploy your own applications. So the main uh, capability that we'll be focusing on today from the Hello AI world tutorial, which you can run at any time on your own, uh, is the object detection capability. And the tutorial comes with a number of pre-trained networks that you can load on the Nano uh, that are downloaded when you download the repo. The one that we will mainly be using uh, is the SSD MobileNet V2 model, uh, which was trained on 91 different types of object classes using the MS Coco dataset. Uh, the SSD MobileNet V2 is the default model that's loaded, although there's a number of different ones that you can use as well. So after uh, you know you go to the GitHub, browse around a little bit, go to the building the project from source page, which will detail how you download the repo and build it on the Nano. And if you already have uh, this installed, you can skip ahead a few minutes, uh, but we're going to go through the steps to install it here. Uh, so first what we'll do is install a couple of prerequisite packages through the apt package manager, things like git and cmake uh, the, for the steps. First you'll want to do a sudo apt git update, and then once that's done, install git, cmake, and um, if you want to use python 3.6, you will install libpython3-dev and python3-numpy. Again, all of these instructions are covered in that page uh, we just showed. So after you have installed those packages, you're going to want to clone 
the repo. The address is github.com slash dusty dash mv slash jetson dash inference. Jetson inference is the name of the underlying library that the Hello AI World tutorial is built on. Uh, and then it'll clone that uh, along with a bunch of documentation and test images uh, that we will be able to use during this example here. So after that is all cloned, you're going to cd into the jetson-inference directory. Then you're going to make a build directory that the whole package will be built to, cd into that, then run the cmake step that's going to configure the whole thing. And you'll see this screen pop up that lets you select which pre-built, pre-trained networks you want to download. Uh, Generally, it's okay just to select the defaults, which will you know, be covered in the tutorial here. SSD MobileNet V2 is one of those pre-selected networks, but you can select a bunch of others that you want, like the image recognition, other object detection networks, and there's a bunch of segmentation networks included as well. Then it will automatically download these, and if a download fails, it'll retry to download it for you. So we see it. Uh, complete those. Then it's going to ask you if you want to install PyTorch. We can skip that step at this time because that's for that. Uh, and PyTorch is used for training uh, networks on board the Nano, which we'll cover in a future tutorial. Then after it's done configuring, what we're going to do is run the make command that will build the underlying C++ library in addition to the Python bindings which will allow us to interface with Python from C++. We sped that up a bit there uh, to, so this video isn't so long. Uh, then you're going to run sudo make install, and that's going to install it into your system. Then one thing to run is sudo ld config just to link all the libraries appropriately across your system. Then after that, the whole system and libraries installed correctly. You're going to cd into the ar64 slash bin directory underneath Jetson Inference, and there's a bunch of applications in addition to images that get built there, uh, test images that we'll be able to use during the tutorial uh, to test that our detector is working appropriately. So what we're going to do is process a couple of test images from the console before we actually run the full on uh, live camera recognition just to test that the library is working correctly and that the object detection network is producing valid results. And um, what it's doing is running the inference through a library called TensorRT. And this is a library that accelerates inferencing on Jetson and other NVIDIA platforms. And this program is written uses TensorRT underneath, so you don't necessarily need to know the API. What we're going to do is look into this Python program that basically loads an image from the disk and then runs it through the TensorRT object detection API, uh, which is a wrapper that we've essentially written around TensorRT for you. And uh, you can see here, this is where the image is loaded, which was specified from the command line. Then we create this detectNet object from the Jetson inference library. That's what uses TensorRT underneath to get the real-time performance. Then we use a uh, net.detect function, which is a function that's implemented in the detectNet object, and that returns to us a list of detections that have been returned from the image. Then uh, we can save out those detections, and the detections are also automatically overlaid on top of the image for us, um, including bounding box information, the confidence values, and the label of the class that was detected. Okay, so generally the first time you run a model, it'll take a couple minutes to load. TensorRT is doing its optimizations. But when that's done, you can navigate into the bin directory through your browser, which is where the image is saved that we uh, just processed. You can open that up and view the results. This is an image of a bunch of different pedestrians. You can see here that the detector uh, detected all four of them, and the confidence values are quite high. So let's now do a couple more test images. This next one is going to have both a car and a human in it that are overlapping, so it will serve as a challenging example. 
So we'll run the Detect Connect console program again on this different image. And you see this output in the browser here. You can see here it detects both the car and the human independently with high confidence, even though there's a lot of overlap between them. This next example called airplane underscore zero dot JPEG also has a lot of overlapping content, uh, which is challenging. We open up the output image here. We'll see that it detected three different humans and the airplane, even though there was a bunch of overlap between them. So in addition to humans and cars and different types of vehicles, the SSD mobile net network, which is trained on the Coco data set, includes a bunch of different types of animals like cats, dogs, and a bunch of different zoo animals as well. So this is an image of a cat and uh, you can see it also detects a bottle in, in the image here. Let's do another one uh, on a dog. This one is called uh, dog underscore zero dot JPEG. And there's a bunch of images in each of these sequences that you can try. Let's check out the results of this one. This one has a dog and it's human in it. You can see it detected them both, even though, uh, you know, they were kind of overlapping there. So we'll do one more here. This one is of a horse, uh, horse underscore zero dot JPEG. We check out the results from this one we can see that it's a horse and it detects the rider uh, on top of it which is actually pretty challenging because it wasn't really trained on images of people riding horses per se okay so now that we've built up the repo tested the code and you know performed some test images now we're going to proceed to actually doing the coding for our real-time object detection program from the camera. So go to the coding your own object detection step. You can follow along on this GitHub page. Every step we're going to do is also covered here, so that could make it easy to follow for you. So first thing you want to do is open up your text editor of choice. Here we're just going to use the default text editor with Ubuntu gedit, and you're going to open a new file and save it as my-detection.py or you can call it whatever you want and save it wherever. In this case, we're just saving it in the user's home directory. So the very first thing we'll do, as you saw in the uh, DetectNet console sample, is we're going to import the jetson.inference and jetson.utils libraries. These are the Python bindings for the core C++ library from Hello AI World that use the uh, TensorRT library underneath to accelerate the inferencing to real-time rates. So the next thing that we're going to do is create a DetectNet object, just like we saw in the previous script. Uh, it's using jetson.inference.detectNet. Now you could use like a using import statement here in Python, so you don't have to type these all out. For clarity of where these objects originate from, I just use the full module paths here. So we create the DetectNet object, we're going to load the SSD MobileNet v2 model, and we're going to set the threshold to 0.5 or 50%, which is the default. We just set it here for clarity so you know how to change it uh, in the future if you need to. Uh, you can decrease the threshold and it will detect more objects, or increase the threshold and it will detect less objects if you're getting lots of spurious detections or uh, you know, not getting enough detections, for example. So this SSD mobile net v2 string, uh, it corresponds in the table of pre-trained models that were downloaded with the repo that we saw before. Uh, here is that table. You can change out this string for the other objects like SSD inception v2, which is a bit larger network, a little bit slower, but also more accurate. And here is also the API documentation for the DetectNet object. So this is where all of the parameters to the different DetectNet functions are documented, and you can go in there and look at all the different options available to you. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now that we've loaded the object detection network is to create the camera object. Uh, this is using an object from the Jetson Utils module called GST Camera, uh, which uses GStreamer underneath to 
either use a video for Linux 2 or a MIPI CSI camera. So example cameras that you can use can be found here on the Jetson Nano Wiki. Uh, most common are generally the Raspberry Pi camera module V2, which is a MIPI CSI camera based on the IMX219 sensor, which support is built into uh, the Jetpack L4T kernel 4. Or you can use like common USB webcams like the Logitech C920, uh, which is what I'm going to use in the example because the USB cameras have like a longer cord typically, so you can move it around the room and test things out um, and make it easier that way. So there's also API documentation available for the Jetson.utils module, and you can find it here. Uh, that was the GST camera documentation that will show you all of the different options and functions available for that. So here we just specify um, a GST camera object that we're going to create. The first parameter is the desired width, followed by the height, followed by the device file. Uh, for video for Linux 2. In this case, my camera is on dev video 1, uh, so you'll specify that here. Or if you're using a MIPI CSI camera, you will just uh, specify 0 or 1 or the index of the MIPI CSI camera. In general, uh, you will have one MIPI CSI camera plugged in, so it will be uh, 0. You can list the cameras that you have available. Uh, with the v4l2 control command, uh, v4l2 control dash list devices, and this will list out all of the different uh, video for Linux 2 cameras available in your system. So this was how I found that my Logitech C920 camera was connected to dev slash video 1. And then you can find which video formats are supported by using the list formats extended command which will list all of the valid resolutions that you can set the camera to. Here's 1280 by 720 listed, which I've set uh, in the code, which is generally like a good resolution to, to set on these USB or MIPI CSI cameras. So next, we're going to create an OpenGL display window uh, for rendering the results of the overlay to. That's just using the jetson.utils.gl display uh, object which is in that uh, documentation that we showed a minute ago. Next we're going to create a main application loop which is basically just going to loop forever until the display gets closed by the user. So we'll use this while display dot is open function which will return true if the display window is still open or false if it has been closed or exited by the user which would then terminate the program. So the first command inside of the application main loop is uh, the camera capture uh, command, which will return the image along with its dimensions from either the video for Linux 2 or the MIPI CSI camera. And it, this function will block until the next frame is available. Uh, if it's set to 30 hertz, for example, it'll wait until the system has received the next frame. Then it basically takes the raw format of the camera and converts it into floating point RGBA on the GPU uh, so that we're able to use it with the neural network. Next, we're going to use the DetectNet object to actually perform the detections. Uh, just like in the console example, it looks very similar. We just pass in the image along with its dimensions and it returns to us the list of detections. Here's the documentation for the detect function. It also takes in an optional string that specifies the format of the overlay, uh, which can be bounding boxes or labels or confidence values or any combination of those. By default, it will output the boxes, the uh, confidence values, and the class labels all in the same image. So the list of detections that it outputs, each of those has a bunch of different members included in it, including the bounding box, uh, the confidence values, and the labels, and a bunch of different functions to use and manipulate uh, those detections. 
Those are all documented here in the code that you can use. So if you want to make your own custom program, you can interact directly with this list of detections. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to render the overlaid image out to the OpenGL window. We just use this display.renderOnce function, which signifies um, to the window that we're just going to render this one texture. So after we render that, um, you know, flip the black buffer so you don't have to manually make another call to do that. The last line in the program is we're going to update the title of the window to include the current performance. So we just do that with this uh, string formatting command here. And we're going to get the performance of the network via the net.getNetworkFPS function, which uses the internal profiling um, mechanisms to spit out the frames per second that the network's processing in. So that's it. It took all of 10 lines of Python code, and we basically imported the modules, we loaded the network, we created the camera and the OpenGL display, and then we created our main loop, which captured the image, performed the detections, and rendered them out to the display. So now we can uh, run the application and play around uh, with it, detecting a bunch of different objects that you might have at your desk or in your household or in your office space. So CD your console back to where you stored the script, in this case it was the user's home directory, then you can launch it by running the python uh, space my-detection.py, which basically we're just going to load this script with python, then it's going to load the network like before, okay so here we go, it's detecting me and a desk chair in the background running at 22 frames per second on the now you can generally expect between 22 and 25 frames per second out of the SSD mobile net v2 model on nano uh, it also detects a bunch of different types of animals uh, cats dogs if you have furry friends at home you can play around with it uh, here are some other like zoo animals that it detects an elephant a bear a horse funny enough these are just little animal figures but it detects them as the real object here are some uh, matchbox cars that it detects as real cars with high confidence values uh, as you can see the transfer learning and uh, it detects a bunch of different kitchen objects as well cups bowls that you might have around including different stuff that you might have on your desk like keyboards mouse displays laptops uh, so here's looking at my dirty desktop um, here's the nano that all this is running on right now you can see I actually have a MIPI CSI camera attached to. Here's uh, a laptop that it's detecting on my workbench. And uh, I actually have another laptop that I use for training neural networks. So it can do a lot in real time on the Nano, all in that little script that we wrote. So that will conclude the object detection portion of the tutorial. But we hope that you follow the full Hello AI world, which includes image recognition and also segmentation. The image recognition portion will walk you through how you classify images with networks like GoogleNet or ResNet-based networks. And like object detection, it includes a bunch of pre-trained networks, and you start by processing images from the console and then doing a similar live camera demo, both in Python or C++, uh, depending on your preference. Then uh, you can follow up with the semantic segmentation step, which is a lot like classification, except that it classifies at a per pixel level, and there's a bunch of cool pre-trained models that are included for that, for things like self-driving or off-road robot navigation. This is the Cityscapes model, which is a popular semantic segmentation data set. This is an off-roads trail data set uh, that I was trained on called Deep Scene. There's also this multi-human parsing model that's included uh, for doing things like pose estimation. And then one of the classic semantic segmentation data sets is called Pascal VOC, 
which includes 21 different types of objects. All of these models are actually 21 classes except for Deep Scene, which is five. And then the final model is based on the Sun RGB data set, which has a bunch of different indoor scenes from office spaces, homes, bedrooms, kitchens, and is like really cool if you're working indoors. So that's the Hello AI World tutorial. We'll be adding more features and hopefully doing more videos on Hello AI World, walking you through the steps. Uh, but you can also follow the tutorial at your own pace. So there are a bunch of other resources to help you get started with Nano here on the DevKit page, including a bunch of different projects that have come from the community, like the JetBot, which is an autonomous open source robot created around the Jetson Nano. Other ones like the Jet Racer, which is an RC race car that can be trained to be autonomous using the Nano and a bunch of different projects that the community has contributed. So you can use those as inspiration to how to apply your own applications to the Nano. If you need any help, there is also a community support forum for all of the Jetsons, including the Nano. You can find a link to it right here on your Jetson desktop. So thanks for joining us for the video. We hope that you'll try out the Hello AI World tutorial including a bunch of the other Jetson Nano projects available, and uh, have a lot of fun, and we'll see you next time.